Hey everybody, so I'm here in sunny Lisbon, Portugal. Just a personal trip after the Mobile World Congress, but I'm actually still working. So I have here on me the Realme 3. I've been testing this phone for over two weeks now, so this is a full review. So you might be asking yourself, didn't Realme just release another phone not that long ago, like three, four months ago? Uh, the Realme U1 and yeah, that's how Chinese phone brands are now. They just pump out phones like every three, four months. So a big question to ask is, is this phone worth upgrading? Now, chipset, it's exactly the same. Helio P60 for the global version and the display, same 6.2 inch. So overall, the phone performance is very similar, but there are four upgrades, some of which are important, some of which are quite minor. So the minor one is the Realme 3 now has a unibody design, meaning this whole body, the back, from the back to the chassis is one piece. So basically it's just a display panel that goes on top of the body. It feels a little bit smoother in the hand as a result, but it's still a plasticky back, so it's not that premium feeling. Number two, battery has gotten a big bump. The battery inside this phone, it's a 4,230 milliamp hour battery. So 4230, that is huge and definitely has been more than enough to power this phone for almost two days, like one and a half days easily. This is a big jump from the Realme U1, which had a 3,500 milliamp hour battery. So three, software has gotten a big improvement too. So this is ColorOS version six. I'll cover this later in the second part of the video, but the main improvements is that it now adds much needed camera software modes, including a night mode, which the Realme calls Nightscape. If you're a OnePlus user, you know it's that um, basically, the camera algorithm will snap three to four images and then pull image information from all four photos, combine the data to produce one image that's a little bit brighter with a little bit more lighting information and better dynamic range. So it's a very similar to the night modes already seen in Huawei, Xiaomi, OnePlus devices, but Realme offering a night mode in this phone at this price range is huge because usually budget phones which this phone is, do not have a night mode. So this is new. And there's also a chroma mode, which is similar to night mode, but for use during the day, and it helps enhance dynamic range. Now, both modes require you to hold the phone still for about three, four seconds. So that means you can't do quick shots, but it's still useful. You don't need a tripod, at least it's completely handheld. Now, number four is the price. So you remember the Realme U1 Pro sold for 170 US dollars. Now this one, the Realme 3 sells for 150. Now, this is not the official pricing. This is just a price that um, the Realme PR guy told me. He says it will be around 150. So if it ends up being this price, this is a really damn good value. I mean, $150 for a smartphone with a chipset that's more than capable and can take pretty decent photos. I mean, that's impressive. So that's about it for the first part of this video because it's really cold out here. I'm gonna head inside now where we'll cover software, camera photos, performance, all that. All right, guys, so I'm back in the comfort of my cozy Airbnb in Lisbon. I wanted to shoot the entire video outside, but it was just too damn cold, too damn windy, too damn loud. And plus, people were walking around giving me weird looks. Okay, so earlier I mentioned that there are two versions of the Realme 3. The one I have right here that you see is the global version, but there's also the India version, which looks exactly the same. I just have two different colors here. The India version runs on Helio P70, while the global version runs on Helio P60. Now, as I said earlier, the only reason India got the P70 is because of the band frequencies that are needed to use inside India. Otherwise, the performance between the P60 and P70 is just about exactly the same in real world usage and in benchmarks. In fact, I ran both phones on Antutu 3D Bench and these are the scores. So you have the global version on the left and the India version on the right. So the India version with the Helio P70 did score a little bit higher, but I mean, the difference is under a thousand points out of like 135,000, so that means it's nothing. Like, plus, we don't need to go by these damn scores. I use both of these phones side by side over like eight, nine days, and performance is absolutely the same in real life use. So now let's go over this phone's build quality and hardware. So this is a 6.2 inch display at 1520 by 720 pixels. It's the exact same display found in the last Realme device a few months ago, and while resolution is a little bit below 1080p, it's above 720p. And on a screen that's not huge, that's not like 20 inches, you're not gonna be able to see a difference. The PPI on this is still 271, which is pretty high. And you know, as you can see here, colors look very lively. Viewing angle of this phone is solid. I wouldn't say viewing angles are excellent, but it's not bad at all. Now, if there's one gripe, it's that overall brightness, it's a little bit low. 
Now indoors, I can see the screen just fine, but when I use this phone outside under direct sunlight, especially in Lisbon where it's really sunny, I had trouble seeing the screen. But now if I use this phone in Hong Kong where it's a little bit more gloomy all the time and there are a lot of tall buildings covering the sun, I'm pretty sure it'll be absolutely fine. So now in terms of ports, you see right here, it's a micro USB port, unfortunately. So this phone charges by micro USB. Boo, come on, Oppo, Realme, Vivo. Please give us USB-C. You do get a headphone jack and you have speaker grills right here on the left and two holes for mics. Now, the SIM tray here, it's pretty cool. It can house two SIM cards and a micro SD card at the same time so you don't have to choose. So that's a nice touch. Now looking at the camera hardware, this phone has the exact same camera hardware as the last Realme device. I believe that was the Realme uh, U1 Pro or U1. There's just too many phones, I forget all the names, but you have a 13 megapixel main lens with an f1.8 aperture and a secondary five megapixel depth sensor that helps you do the edge detection, bokeh shots, all that. Around the front, you have a 13 megapixel selfie camera inside this water drop notch. Now, even though camera hardware is exactly the same, but as I mentioned, Realme has worked hard to improve the camera software here with new algorithm and new camera modes. So the main one, the main addition is chroma mode. You turn it on and off by tapping on this button here. When you turn it off, you just take a normal photo as this. But now when you turn it on, it takes like two, three seconds of waiting, but what it's doing right now, it's it's taking multiple images and then stitching them all together, combining image information. So you get colors that are very, very punchy and with contrast that's dialed up. And generally you get better dynamic range too. Compared to the real thing, you see it just pops a little bit more. This is the chroma shot. And then you have right here, this is the normal non-chroma shot. So you see colors are a little bit more dull compared to the chroma images. So now the other new mode, Nightscape, allows you to take a night mode shot, that which is basically kind of like a long exposure shot without the need of a tripod. It's the same concept as the chroma mode. The phone's basically snapping three or four images and then combining all the data together so you get a shot that's brighter with better dynamic range. Now, personally, I think the night mode in the Realme 3 doesn't work too well. I think it's because I'm spoiled by the night modes in Huawei phones. But you know, it's not fair comparing a $900 Huawei Mate 20 Pro to a $150 Realme 3. So that's not a fair comparison at all. In general, I do think if you take photos during the night, you're still gonna get a pleasing image for this price point. Just don't expect anything truly stunning like you get out of a Huawei Mate 20 Pro or a Google Pixel 3. In fact, I'll just stop talking and just show you more photo samples. You'll see that this phone takes really nice images. So now moving on to the selfie camera, there's a very, very heavy beauty mode, which as you can see really just kind of makes me look unnatural. You, you see, I can slim my face, make my whole face smaller and do weird things like make my eyes larger and a uh, smaller nose, all of that. So it's really funky. If you turn it off though, then the selfie camera, it's okay. There's a portrait mode too. I think the portrait selfies look a little bit fake. The edge detection and the blur in the background is a little bit strong and unrealistic, but I think for $150, this selfie camera should be more than good enough to get the job done. Now the video capabilities of the Realme 3, it's really impressive for this price point. You can shoot videos at up to 1080p 30, which I'll show you a sample of right now. So check out the colors on this thing. So sound input is just okay. There's a little bit of distortion. And you see that the video is suffering from dynamic range problems right now. You see it kind of struggled a little bit to find that balance. And no stabilization when I walk is a little bit jerky, but overall, I mean, check out the colors and check out the details on this thing. I'm a zoom right now. Now, likewise with selfie videos, this is above average. Okay. 
So as I mentioned earlier, the Helio P60 and P70 chipset really there's no difference in performance. Day-to-day -day use, whether it was just launching apps, surfing the web, watching YouTube videos, or playing games, even graphically intensive ones, this phone handled everything just fine. This is a hell of a lot of performance you're getting for just 150 bucks. Now it's time to get to the software because I gotta give props to Oppo slash Realme here. You guys know that I'm not a big fan of Chinese phones as Android skin, especially Oppo's Color OS, which I, I didn't quite like. Oppo has, well, Oppo and Realme has improved this by quite a lot. So this is Color OS version 6, and you see, there's an app tray. It's an actual real app tray. You can search for apps too. So that's really awesome. This is something that just about every English reviewer has wanted. So much credit to Realme, much credit to Oppo for giving us an app tray. It's not just that, the whole aesthetic of the software looks very clean. It's more in line with how Google envisioned it. You see when you change volume, you have the bubbles that pop up on the side. The notification, the shortcut toggles has this kind of rounded bubble look, which is kind of, you know, pleasing. Flat design, material design, just like Google Vision. The whole interface is just easy to use. Now, the only thing is I do wish I can bring down notification shape by swiping down here. I still can't do that. I still get this rip off iPhone search, which I hate on Android phones, but it is what it is. But I do like this swipe shortcut tray right here that, you know, it's just on the edge of the screen. You can move it around if you like. All you do is swipe on it and then you can launch apps immediately. So pretty damn cool. While we're in YouTube, we might as well do a video speaker test, right? So here we go. So this is a single bottom fine speaker, obviously. So we'll go up to 50% volume. We'll go up to 100% volume. So yeah. So you can muffle a speaker very easily, but the, the speaker sounds good. At max volume, there's no distortion. I better end this before I get in trouble with the girlfriend. So yeah, the speakers, again, for $150, zero complaints whatsoever. Now in terms of battery life, there's not much more to talk about. This phone has a 4,230 milliamp hour battery. That is insane. I've been getting over eight hours of screen on time on a single charge, and the phone can definitely last me in an entire day without any issues. So this is a battery beast too. So my conclusion for this phone, after like eight, nine days of use is this is a winner if you are on the market for budget phone. In fact, this is such a damn good value. I really think it's getting harder and harder to recommend people buying $800, $900 phone. Now, of course, if I compare this to an Oppo Find X or a Huawei Mate 20 Pro, is this phone better than those phones? Of course not. But those phones, when they first went on sale, was like $700, $900. This is 150 bucks. $150, I can't get over it. You get so much for the value, it's insane. Now the catch is, you can only really buy this phone if you're in India or Southeast Asia. This phone will not go on sale in China or Hong Kong or the US or Europe, so you're out of luck. You're gonna have to import it. This super budget price is for the Southeast Asian market, but they deserve it. They're a growing market that's very passionate about phones, and I'm glad that Chinese brands are focusing on them. So this is the Realme 3, and I'm liking it a lot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.